I sometimes read uh, public domain books here on Leaves of Glen. And they were written a long time ago, uh, so they're usually uh, racist or sexist or bigoted. Uh, but in there somewhere and all that is a, a story, and that's why those stories are famous. Other times, I read uh, works from independent authors, and they're delightfully not racist, but they might have adult language or adult situations. So that's your warning, uh, but I'm sure you uh, are grown up enough to handle it. Don't write to me complaining. Oh, oh, hello! Oh, you caught me meditating here in the Leaves of Glen Mansion. It's a fun little bit where I pretend to live in a mansion and not just recording in my basement. It's where I read the hottest public domain books and short stories. This week, I'm reading Tying the Knot by Tiffany Rice. Uh, about the author... Tiffany Rice is an American author best known for the original Sinner series of erotica. Uh, and she has won the Rita Award twice. Uh, Rice is best known for writing the original Sinner series published by Harlequin imprint Mira Books uh, called Smart Smut by NPR and Fifty Shades for Adults by Salon. Rice's work is known for its witty depictions of sex and heavy use of religious imagery and themes can't say that. That was weird. It's like trying to kick the words out of my mouth. Uh, in 2014, USA Today championed Rice for her diverse characters. Rice is a Catholic and attended Asbury Theological Seminary and sent to college. She lives in Louisville, Kentucky uh, with her husband, novelist Andrew Schaefer. Want to hear some fun facts about this author? Sure, why not? Because I found the frequently asked questions part of her website. Uh, question, how do you pronounce Rice. Answer, rice. Like the food. Uh, where do you live? Answer, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I heard heard you were a nun. Answer, nope. Uh, I did go to a conservative southern seminary (laughs) and dropped out to write. You can read about my journey from seminary student to erotica writer at the Huffington Post. Question, I heard you were a dominatrix. (laughs) Answer, more lies. I visited uh, a dominatrix, though, and you can also read about that at the Huffington Post. Question, do you answer your own emails? Answer, yes. Though it could take up three months for me to respond, I reply to every email except for emails that contain nudity. I I don't, uh, don't send me naked pics of yourself or anyone else. I have the internet after all. Well, there's that. Still got a shitload of time before the grandfather clock goes off. I guess I should make it clear that since I'm taking a break from reading actual long books, uh, I'm trying to find short things to read. So I've been digging around on Reddit, reached out to a couple people, and they were nice enough to let me read their stories. Uh, Now I've found this on the internet, where it's it's an actual famous author who writes erotica, who... uh, put a bunch of stories up online on her website uh, so I don't know if that's public domain but uh, you put it on your website if I'm going to read it you shouldn't have put it on your website it's not like I bought the book brought it home, cracked it open and started reading it thinking hey, 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 they'll never catch me, this should be fine you put it on your website you send your lawyers around all I'm going to do is send you an email because I know you read your emails and I'll just say I, I thought you were cool man Something like that. Uh, but anyways, uh, so hopefully this will be fine that I'm reading this. I don't know. Uh, I, I, there's major world events going on that I have nothing intelligent to add to it. Uh, clearly, Putin is a horrible person. He's been a horrible person forever. He literally assassinates people that talk bad about him. So I don't really have anything like uh, clever or insightful to add to it. So I kind of don't want to go on about it. Because uh, what am I going to say? Uh, I mean, obviously, what he's doing to Ukraine is completely horrible, and he's horrible. And uh, if all these other countries watching and doing the economic sanctions, uh, if they don't play the cards right, we could maybe be in another world war. Or maybe not. That might be paranoid thinking. I have nothing intelligent to add. Damn it, even talking about the war didn't run out, uh, run out the time on the clock. I'm still waiting for that damn thing to chime. 
Uh, cars are cool. Have you ever seen a fast car? Fast cars are pretty cool. Uh, one time I got to ride in one. Oh, thank God. Why don't we uh, get out of this drawing room and uh, we'll go to the library where I will read to you Tying the Knot by Tiffany Rice. Well, get yourself all seated and real snugly, and for God's sake, uh, don't play video games while you listen to this, especially children's video games like Pokemon, as I read to you Tying the Knot, an erotic short story by Tiffany Rice. That they called him at all was the first bad sign. Bryce stepped into the house uh, that he'd been banished from three days ago and looked around. Tull everywhere, sequins everywhere, roses everywhere. And from upstairs came the sound of tears. Oh, thank God, said Janice as she came down the staircase. A, a handkerchief pressed to her chest. Uh, she won't listen to anybody. Uh, how bad is it? Bryce stepped over a box of wine glasses that someone had left in the foyer. Mm -hmm. Bad, Janice shook her head. Uh, she hasn't stopped crying for an hour. Uh, the shoes. It was the shoes that sent her over the edge. Bryce raised his hands to silence Janice. The crying grew louder. Uh, turned briefly uh, into painting uh, or panting as the weeper tried to regain control of herself before dissolving once more into tears. The second bad sign. Uh, get everyone out of the house, he ordered Janice. I need to be alone with Leah, Leah, Lay, Lay, L-E-I-G-H. Ah, crap, now I gotta look this up. Uh... Lay, girl, from thinkbabynames.com. Lee. Lee? Lee. As a name for girls, also used as a boy's name, Lee is of Hebrew and Old English origin. And the meaning of the name Lee is a delicate, weary meadow or pasture. Lee. There's a version. Of, ah, stop. <laughs> it's biblical for Jacob's first wife. All right, fine, whatever. Get everyone out of the house, he ordered Janice. I need to be alone with <sighs> Lee. Nodding, Janice picked the box of wine glasses off the floor. I'll come back in an hour to pick her up. Uh, yeah, is that enough time? Bryce thought about the possibilities. What he could do, uh, what he should do. Uh, uh, more than enough. Uh, but Janice? Yes? A knock first. Janice took Lee's ten-year-old niece by the hand. Two other women, uh, Lee's best friend and her favorite co-worker, both barely glanced at him as they pulled on coats around puffy blue dresses. Uh, 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 good luck, Janice said. Don't worry, Bryce said. Already halfway up the stairs. Ah... Uh, I got this. Bryce found his fiancée in a pile of white satin underwear on the floor, her mascara running in miserable rivulets down her otherwise uh, beautifully painted face. <laughs> no, period. No, comma, no, comma, no, period, period, period. Lee covered her face with her hands. You're not supposed to see me. Not now. Not like this. Not ever. Sighing. Bryce squatted in front of her and, and cupped her chin with his hand, forcing her to meet his eyes. Oh, I've seen you in white before. Oh, I've seen you in tears before. Seeing you right now isn't going to doom the wedding. But, M Dash, but the bride having a nervous breakdown two hours before the ceremony might. She gave a little pathetic laugh and, and, and hiccuped on her tears. Uh, uh, had, had she ever looked smaller, more vulnerable, more desirable before? If so, he couldn't remember when. Shoes? This over shoes, young lady? He let his voice turn stern. She always responded best to his fatherly tone. Uh, that's kind of creepy. Ah, uh, yeah, green. She grabbed a high heel and brandished it in his face. Uh, so? The dresses are blue. The, the, the dye job, it's totally wrong. So go barefoot, you, go barefoot, period, you, period, the bridesmaids, period, everyone, period, hell, comma, I'll go barefoot, period. 
People will think it's sweet and eccentric, and we'll pretend it's on purpose. But will our marriage be null and void if the shoes don't match? And Lee only stared at him for a moment before shaking her sad head. Long chestnut curls fell across her shoulders. No, ah, then fuck the shoes. But one more but, I'm going to fuck the bride, too. <laughs> Lee's breath caught in her throat. Oh, she always gasped when he used such language with her. Yeah, but you aren't even supposed to see me before the wedding, much less. Eh, yeah, and that was another but up. What? And that was another, quote, but, period, unquote, up, period. Bryce stood up and waited. She didn't move. I'm not kidding, Lee. Get off the floor right this second. Ooh. That reminds me of, uh, just weddings in general. Weddings are kind of a weird, creepy, princessy prince thing. People always want to be magical. Basically, they're trying to create their own Disney fantasies uh, in their real life by getting married and having everyone look at them. Hey, everyone pay attention to me. I'm getting married. Uh, I've seen it a million times before because I'm old. Uh, I've been to a million weddings. It's always the same thing. Oh, I'm handsome. Look how I'm dressed. Everyone look at me. That's the whole thing. If you're going to have everyone look at you, then you might as well, you know, really impress them. In this case, she got the wrong kind of shoes. What do you do when you got green shoes when you're wearing a, uh, the bridesmaids have blue dresses? I don't even know. It's just a wedding thing. Who cares what color their suits were? What does, what does it matter? Uh, the point is, is that if you want to really impress someone, don't go barefoot. That's stupid. This husband is stupid. What you want to do is you want to really impress people. But how could you do it? And how can you do it fast? Well, that's easy. You call Doorglass Incorporated. That's D-O-R-G-L-A-S-S dot com. They're dedicated to fabricating and professionally installing the highest quality glass products for the nation's top manufacturers. Their inventory, combined with years of experience, make them the premier source for installation and repair. They approach every project with the same goals. Professionalism, uh, integrity, and most importantly, they're discreet. What are you going to do... Uh, when they can manage commercial storefronts, automatic entrances, windows, patio doors, mirrors, shower doors, installation repair, and they'll design and build anything you ask. Well, what are you going to do? These people can literally create anything you want in no time at all. You can say to them, I don't want to go barefoot to my wedding. We have five minutes. Doorglass Incorporated will come up with their trucks that have giant plates of glass just on the side of their trucks. It's just on the outside. It's really weird. Like, that thing's going to break. You take a sharp turn or somebody, like, smacks it or something. That thing's going to break. They don't care if they're professionals. They know how to handle it. They know how to drive and they veer in and out of traffic where no one touches their glass. Uh, they show up, and then you say, I uh, want my magical wedding to still be magical. We don't want to be barefoot. And they say, ah, oh, yeah, you want something magical. And you go, yeah. Yeah, door glass corporate, I want something magical. It's my magical wedding. Uh, give me something worthwhile. And they'll say, hey, yeah, yeah, you, you want something special. Huh? You want something magical? You, yes, door glass corporate, do something. And then all of a sudden, they take their little tiny hands with these perfectly clean little fingernails. And they just sit there. And all of a sudden, they take a, a piece of glass and smush it as if it's made of silly putty, which is weird. I've seen it. I don't know how they do it. I think their hands are really, really hot. And so they just smush it all down. And they will literally make a glass shoe for you, just like the magical fairy tale wedding that you just have to have. So uh, with that, call Door Glass Incorporated. They will make you glass slippers and glass gentleman's shoes. So you don't have to go barefoot and look like an idiot. Their clients are Pottery Barn, Williams-Sonoma, Sherman Williams, Portillo's, which is a sandwich shop no one cares about, the Salt Cave, which is a place in Minneapolis where they have Himalayan salt cubes all over their walls, so they're all backlit, so they look all mysterious, like you're in some sort of weird Egyptian like movie about ancient Egypt, and you're discovering treasure, and you get in there, and uh, you're like, okay, I'm going to find the secret passage. You start putting your hands on the walls. Don't touch the walls. That's the one thing they say on their website. Do not touch the walls. You go there, you look at it, but you don't touch it. You could do yoga around it. You could have hot yoga, so you sweat like a pig. You could probably, I don't even know what else you do. I, I think I said last time, you, you do like the pat Paddleboard yoga, which is just the dumbest thing I ever heard in my entire life. They'll, they'll, they'll put a, just put your paddleboard on the ground. Just say, oh, it's going to be kind of wiggly, but that's the point. You got to do yoga. And then uh, you'll do that, but you cannot touch the walls. If you fall off your paddleboard, you accidentally smack into one of the walls. 
I think they just take you away. I don't know where they take you, but you're gone for like three weeks. And then your family is like, you just show up outside your family's door at like six in the morning. I don't know. But don't touch the walls. And Applebee's. Well, with that, um, I think I've solved their problem. I don't think that they need to have any kind of erotic sex. You just call Door Glass Incorporated. Uh, and they're going to give you your glass slippers that they'll make in five minutes. Uh, and you don't have to have sex before your marriage. You can still have a, you get a good Christian wedding and all the magic you wanted to begin with. Well, with that, why don't we uh, whew, retire upstairs to the master bedroom where we can learn about the latest upcoming romance literature from Penguin Random House Books. Oh boy, here I come. This better be good the last couple times you... Uh, the hell you dress like? We're supposed to have an erotic moment up here in my master bedroom with my silken sheets and my giant, beautiful wooden bed frame. But instead, you're standing there with uh, Spock ears and some sort of Yoda shirt. What does he even say? My boobies, you will. Yes. Is that Yoda saying that my boobies, you will? What does that even mean? Are you trying to be some kind of sexy nerd? Oh, this is the word. Okay, the book on the bed. Stuck With You by Allie Hazelwood, read by Meg Sylvan. Oh, it's an e-book and an audiobook. Great, that explains the compact disc you laid next to it on my silk sheet. I don't have a CD player. No one's had a CD player in like 15 years. About Stuck With You, uh, for the New York Times bestselling author of The Love Hypothesis, comes a new steamy Steminist novel. Ugh, it's capital S-T-E-M and lowercase I-N-I-S-T. This is going to be horrible. Nothing like a little rivalry between scientists to take love to the next level. M uh, Mara, Sadie, and Hannah were friends first. Scientists always. Oh, I can start to see where your stupid costume's coming from. Uh, through their f Stop looking at me with those eager eyes. This isn't going to make me find you attractive. Uh, through their fields of study might uh, take them to different corners of the world. They can all agree on one universal truth. When it comes to love and science, opposites attract. And rivals make you burn. Logically, Sadie knows that civil engineers are supposed to in italics, build bridges. Mm -hmm. However, as a woman of STEM, she also understands that variables can change. And when you are stuck for hours in a tiny New York elevator with the man who broke your heart, you earn the right to burn that brawny, mm -hmm. blonde bridge to the ground. Eric can apologize all he wants, but to quote her rebel leader, uh, she'd just as soon kiss a Wookiee. Okay, it's all coming together. Not even the most sophisticated of Sadie's superstitious rituals could have predicted such a disastrous reunion. But while she refuses to acknowledge uh, the siren call of Eric's steely forearms or the way his voice softens when he offers her his sweater, Sadie can't help but wonder if there might be more layers to her cold-hearted nemesis than meets the eye. Maybe, uh, possibly, even burned bridges can still be crossed. Technically, they can't because they're not structurally sound. To listen to Mara and Hannah's stories, look for the novellas Under One Roof, available now, and Below Zero, coming soon, available first on audio. That's a fun little twist. You can find all that. You can download the audiobook uh, on March 8th uh, uh, from Audible, uh, audiobooks.com, audiobookstore.com, Google Play Store, Kobo, uh, and Libro FM. Ebook, Amazon, Apple Books, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Google Play Store, and Kobo. Well, that was a twist. It's not the same uh, place you can get them from. I don't care about this at all. Uh, take off those goddamn Spock ears and put on a different shirt. And let's go back to the library where I can finish reading this story. Well, here you are, uh, still wearing the shirt. Ah, eh, makes sense. You don't show any respect to me in my mansion. Of course you're still wearing the shirt. Who makes a shirt with Yoda saying, my boobies, you will, yes. I, I don't even care. For a woman in seven layers of white petticoats and four-inch high heels, Lee got to her feet with impressive speed. Careful of the fabric, Bryce peeled it off her body until she stood naked in front of him. 
uh, taking her by the wrist, he pulled her to the bed, and she lay on her back. This is very sexy so far. Lee crossed her arms over her chest and stared up at the ceiling. What, like a person being buried? Over your chest like a vampire laying in its casket? Oh, he loved when she played martyr like this. This is weird. Played the innocent, scared virgin to his wicked, ravishing rake. Bryce, burp, grasped her ankle and yanked her to the side of the mattress. What? From underneath the bed, he pulled out a suitcase and quickly unzipped it. Do you have to move her to do it? Glad your mother didn't go digging under our bed while she was here. I told her that's where I kept the naked pictures of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bryce smiled his approver at her lie. Oh, good, you're lying for me. There were no naked pictures of him in the house. And the naked photos of her were under the bed. They were on his iPhone. Did you have to explain that? He pointed to the hook screwed into the ceiling above the bed. I said the previous owners had a lot of hanging house plants. Wicked girl, Bryce chastised as he pulled a two-foot spreader bar and rope from the suitcase. What? How big is this suitcase? A two-foot spreader bar. That's a two-foot wide suitcase. Lying to your mother? Mm, you might have to be punished for that. He threw the rope and the spreader bar down on the bed. Lee watched him with wary eyes as he unbuckled his belt and pulled it free of his pants. Uh, but, she began, and that's all Bryce let her get out. <laughs> but, with two T's, but, oh, but, exactly. Time for something blue. With a snap of his fingers, hmm, like a little imp, he ordered her onto her stomach. Uh, with his belt, he landed one, uh, two, ooh, uh, three quick hard strikes to her bottom and a fourth across the back of her thighs. Now, if that doesn't make you stop stressing about the shoes, I don't know what will. What are shoes? <laughs> Lee asked Bryce as he threw his belt onto the floor and rolled onto her back. They go on your feet, he said. What are feet? Okay. Lee giggled as Bryce wrapped leather cuffs around her ankles. They're the parts of your body that belong to on my shoulders. Remember? Oh, she met his eyes and smiled shyly at him. Oh, yeah, I remember, she whispered. Quickly, Bryce threaded the rope through Lee's ankle cuffs and tied a knot to hold the rope taut. Uh, he cuffed her feet to each end of the spreader bar before hoisting her legs into the air. Oh, like you do to a, a calf you're about to slaughter? He, he loved her like this, tied up, immobile, her body belonging to him and him alone. Dropping to his knees, he gently licked her open folds. Uh, he tasted the sweetness of her desire for him and the sweet, uh, the sweat of her nervousness. Oh, uh, this poor little girl. He knew they should have eloped, but Lee had a bad habit of trying to please everyone. Someday, she that psychologically says something about what's happening right now with your relationship. Someday, she'd understand that she had no one to please but herself and him. And she pleased him every single day. He pushed his tongue into her vagina. Uh, get her as wet as possible. <laughs> he moved his mouth to her clitoris and sucked gently on it as he inserted his fingers into her and, and, and kneaded her G-spot. Oh, he bucked and moaned. She suspended upside down, by the way, like a calf about to be slaughtered as, she, as he pushed in a third finger. Oh, then a fourth. Oh, she loved being penetrated and would even beg for it when he withheld it to punish her, but he couldn't withhold himself from her today. In two hours, they'd be married, joined spiritually and legally into one. But what mattered now was to be joined physically, sexually, and the sooner the better. Lee's breathing quickened as Bryce pushed his fingers even deeper into her, into her, into her wet heat. Her muscles tightened around his hand. Uh, he kneaded her clitoris even harder with his tongue until her whole body went taut and she cried out. Mind you, she's still upside down. Uh, her fluid pouring from deep within her and over his face. By the time he got back to his feet, he'd already opened his pants and freed his erection. Oh, he didn't even let Lee catch her breath. He shoved himself into her hard and deep, thrusting. Oh, without mercy or apology. Oh, he wanted her raw from sex when she walked down the aisle. Every step 
reminding her of his desire for her. Oh, he, he kissed her calves and her ankles as he, as he pumped his hips furiously into her. With the arrival of friends and family, he had been banished to a hotel three days ago, and now he had three days of pent-up need within him. Oh, he thrust three times as hard, uh, 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 three times as long, and finally, uh, when he came with his eyes shut tight, he poured three times as much semen into her. <laughs> <laughs> like three glasses of milk. <laughs> I just threw, that's me. That's not the author. After catching his breath, he pulled out of Lee and cleaned himself off as she lay panting on the bed. Oh, her legs still up in the air. Tied to the spreader bar, Bryce found Lee's abandoned white panties and brought them back to the bed. Oh, he unhooked her ankles from the bar and rested them on his shoulders. Slowly, he slid the satin panties down her legs and over her hips. But don't you dare take a shower between now and the wedding, he ordered as she removed her ankle cuffs and, uh, and put all their supplies away under the bed. Uh, Lee rolled up and wrapped her arms around his shoulders. He held her close and tight and, and hated that he had to let her go now. Yes, sir, she whispered. Oh, he dipped his head and dropped slow kisses onto each nipple before kissing his lips. Now get dressed. I forget the shoes. And if you get stressed again, just think about my cock uh, uh, in your mouth, y your pussy, uh, and your ass in that order. In other words, think about the wedding night exactly. Later that day, dot, dot, dot. Bryce stood barefoot and waiting at the altar as the music began, and one by one, equally barefoot bridesmaids walked down the aisle. He didn't even uh, a glance at them. He didn't even see the 200 assembled guests, didn't even see the groomsmen at his side. He saw only Lee as she appeared in the doorway, bathed in sunlight and smiles. From under her dress, he saw her mm -hmm, uh, naked toes peeking out. And he, he knew his semen still lingered inside her, <laughs> just swimming around at the base of her pelvis. Private proof that she belonged to him already. Ah, uh, that's my girl, he said softly to her as she reached the altar. Now and always. The reverend stepped forward and cleared his throat. Uh, you two ready to tie the knot? He asked in a whisper. Definitely, Lee said. Bryce nodded at him and took a breath. For the second time today. <laughs> what do you think the guy officiating the wedding is supposed to say uh, with that? I'd probably just look at me like, oh, what's that supposed to mean? What are you trying to say? I, I, I get your turn to joke. I just don't get what the joke is. Well, anyways, why don't we go down to the smoking room and uh, review what we just read? Well, there you are. Why don't you get settled in? Uh, have this delicious Cuban cigar that I purchased. Uh, and why don't we review what we read of this story? Uh, first of all... Uh, I forgot. Uh, somebody who's none of your business said that my, uh, my mansion is too empty. I don't really have a lot going on in each room. So they thought it was a good idea that I, that I should get some sort of uh, fun thing to put in the smoking room. And uh, she went out and she bought me a goddamn parakeet. A parakeet in a cage. Uh, I thought, oh, that's, that's kind of one of those things people used to do a long time ago. They thought it was exotic to have uh, some sort of beautiful bird in a cage that you keep in your place. Uh, and it's uh, supposed to be relaxing, but I can't find it relaxing at all. It's constantly jarring. Shut up. It's really jarring and I can't stand it. Let's review uh, what we read today. Well, you got a bride who's... Uh, Going through a hard time. She's having a nervous breakdown because she wants to please everyone that's already been established. So she's got that personality trait. And, uh, and she uh, found out that her shoes don't match. So she's falling apart. Uh, they call the husband. is the only person that can console her. She, oh, oh, <laughs> so they, <clears throat> oh, so uh, they uh, bring him in because he's the only one that can communicate with her. She's not able to uh, function on her own, and uh, you're the only one that can fix her. So he comes in, and instead of actually addressing her concerns, 
uh, and trying to make her feel like she can handle problems on her own without the help of another person, because she's completely emotionally crippled. He just says, I'm going to fuck the shit out of you. Uh, so he does fuck the shit out of her, hangs her legs up, uh, <clears throat> hangs her legs up, and uh, just does all sorts of things to her vagina. Uh, and for weirdly, three times, the kind of like uh, when I read like children's stories or um, uh, like Mother, mm, mother Goose Tales, that uh, that's always in threes. Everything happens in threes. So I'm glad that this erotic story has been done in threes. Three fingers, three times he's done whatever. Uh, he, he ejaculated three times as much as normal. Just weird. Uh, what's good? Uh, I guess that uh, found someone that's into his kink. What sucks? This uh, The author has described this woman as uh, having uh, issues. Where, mm, oh, for God's sakes. She has issues where she uh, is completely dependent on another person to be able to function, both sexually and emotionally. What do we learn? Uh, I have got to get these birds out of here. This is not calming or relaxing at all. It does not not give a certain sense of class to uh, this environment at all. Plus, I hate that you're still wearing the Yoda shirt. Uh, Why don't we wrap this up? I'm not... I'm not happy. Uh, uh, I will be back next week. Uh, Thanks for listening. Ah, uh, well, it appears you found me in the part of the podcast I hate the most, where I tell you all about the places on the internet where you can find me. You can tell I hate this because of the sound effects making it sound like a stormy night uh, in the drawing room of the damned. Now, nah, there's there's that. Uh, I, I, are you cool? I like cool people. It's the reason why I got involved in this business, to begin with, just to meet cool people. Not losers. So if you're cool, uh, feel free to go over to my website, uh, nuzzlehouse.com. You can see a backlog of everything I've ever read, uh, along with episodes from Book Boys and uh, blah, blah, blah. You can also find me on Instagram, uh, which is uh, House Nuzzle. And conveniently enough, uh, Twitter, which is also at House Nuzzle. Annoyingly, YouTube made me pick a name instead of just a house nuzzle. So you got Glenn Nuzzles. So I guess you search for that if you want to watch a screen that doesn't do anything and just hear my voice. Uh, and since uh, since I think you might be cool, you can always just email me directly. Glenn.nuzzles at gmail.com But don't, uh, don't email if you're a, a nerdlinger or a dork. Now, back to business. I can't believe I drank all of them already. There's got to be one left.